Welcome back from that short break. We now continue with New Vision TV News. I am Ruthina Seje. And now we take a look at what's making news in business. Today in business, the Uganda-UK Business Forum 2019 ended in London over the weekend with a call on prospective investors to identify numerous opportunities for trade and investment in Uganda. Sectors with opportunities that were highlighted included agriculture and agro-processing, infrastructure, mining, tourism, ICT, oil and gas, manufacturing and pharmaceuticals. In his address, Uganda's High Commissioner to the UK, Julius Peter Moto, urged the London-based business community to seize the opportunities and invest in Uganda, which is strategically located and gives one access to the big East African community and wider common market for East and Southern Africa. As investigations into Bank of Uganda currency saga intensify, the Central Bank's Director of Communication, Charity Mugumia, has explained that no extra cash was printed, describing the issue as a logistical anomaly. She explained that printing money is a technical process regulated by international standards and viable reasons so it cannot be flaunted by individuals. She dismissed reports that excess cash amounting to 90 billion Uganda shillings could have been printed and stashed away by top bank officials. The saga unfolded when the plane that shipped 350 billion Uganda currency illegally printed in France had extra pallets, raising suspicion that it could have been stacked with excess money. This happened in April, but was kept under wraps until the Bank of Uganda Governor Emmanuel Tumusime Mutebile last week called in the anti-corruption unit of the State House headed by Lieutenant Kano Edith Nakalema to investigate. Twelve officials were arrested, charged and released on bond. New Vision TV is reliably informed investigations are still going on. 42 billion Uganda shillings has been earmarked for development of Lugazi municipality. This is under the Uganda Support to Municipal Infrastructure Development project funded by the World Bank. The project, which is being supervised by the Lands, Housing and Urban Development Ministry on behalf of the government, will now see Lugazi benefiting from the 360 million US dollars under phase two that ends in the year 2022-2023. That is it for the news in business. We now take a look at our Daily Pal of Africa series. Today it is Lake Birinzi. Now Lake Birinzi is found in Masaka District, 128 kilometers south of Kampala, Uganda's capital city. Birinzi is not far from the more famous Lake Nabugabo, which is also found in Masaka District. Now these lakes were formed as a result of sand dunes resulting from strong winds. Let's take a look. Lake Birinze is found in Masaka district in the central region of Uganda. You can talk about Lake Birinze and leave out Lake Nabgabo. The two lakes are best described as babies of Lake Victoria. <laughs> They were formed as a result of sand dunes created by strong winds, which drove water out of Lake Victoria. The sand dunes prevented the water from going back to Lake Victoria, hence forming two separate water bodies. We now see Gracing Massacre District. These water bodies are Lake Nabugawo and Lake Birinze. Just like Lake Nabgabo, Birinzi has a soothing, quiet ambience, cool breeze and fresh air around it. This is one of the reasons why tourists make it their number one destination all year around. Different from other lakes, Birinzi is home to exotic flora. These enhance the shows, giving you the freedom to smell them, take pictures around them, and also a reason to come back. 
More on the shores of Lake Birenzi is vegetation and a number of different tree species. On its waters, birds freshen their bodies and float while giving thanks to God for this creation. The animals also give thanks because without Birenzi, they will not make the continuous stopovers to wet their throats. Together with locals, they compete for the lake serving. The visitors, in form of tourists who come to enjoy the lake, leave a dollar or two when they buy their products. In short, each person around the lake has benefited from it in one way or another. However, the most interesting activity at Birenzi is boat riding as tourists love crossing through to meet the edge of the lake. Many love to swim as the rest keeping around the shores is just enough. In just two and a half hours from Kampala to Masaka, you will be at Lake Birinzi. So why don't you spare some time and find your way here? The fun never ends when it comes to New Vision TV's Pal of Africa Diaries. So till next time, I remain your pal guide, Ruth Naseje. For more Pal of Africa stories, visit our website, which is newvision.ca.org forward slash Pal of Africa. Our newspaper, The Sunday Vision, is also another home of adventures. So grab your copy every Sunday for Pal of Africa stories. We now take a look at our special report today. For 13 years running, New Vision brings together experts from various fields to give a quick and ready analysis of the finance minister's budget speech. New Vision TV has been broadcasting excellent from the discussion that brought together civil society, finance sector players, educationalists and the student community. Now today's discussion will focus on how farmers can add value to their agricultural produce. Let's take a look. I want to take you to page 20 uh, of the speech. That's where he lays out the interventions for farmers. And for me, these are really big and grand schemes, but there are some things, I'll just make some comments from my point of view as a farmer. One of the things I have consistently, when I speak about farming publicly, I've consistently said, the president promised us 18 million hoes, they have never been delivered. Why? You see, uh, you were talking about mechanization of farming. The problem is you can never mechanize weeding of a banana plantation. It has to be done by a hoe, whether it's cassava, because some of the nature of the agriculture is such that we will still need handheld hoes. Um, even if you commercialize, uh, and we have a lot of labor, so you, not everybody is going to use a machine. Because I bought machines for my farm. And I'm having trouble using them because of people failing to use them. Someone even tells you the motor is too hot for me to carry around on my back. So, this, so, it's, so those things are important. What kind of appropriate technology is being invested in? So on the big schemes like the irrigation and those big schemes, I think there's a good work going on there. In fact, for me, when I see floods in Kampala I, and in all these towns, I'm asking myself, why aren't we harvesting this water? Why aren't we creating dams? Robert, to begin with, I'm not a big fan of the president buying hose. Not that we don't need them. We definitely need the hose. But I don't think we should spend that much money on hose. The people who, who need the hose should buy the hose. I, but I think we need to transform agriculture a complete transformation because it is very easy to double the, the productivity of a piece of land. Even in one year, you can actually double the output from a piece of land by doing just a few things. How do we make sure that this, you know, this investment that we are making in infrastructure 
are we able to make other interventions to make sure it's paying back? I mean, you, we've just invested in a big fruit factory in Soroti. Are we making sure that there is produce coming out? How do you go the extra mile to make sure there is the farmers actually growing and the produce is coming? And if we could use agriculture and just commercialize it, bring technology, widen the scale of production, and add value to our exports, that would be very key. We make sure that we move up in the value addition chain of our coffee especially. Yeah, we'd be somewhere. And I think that would help the budget. Thank you. The student talked about value addition in agriculture. We need to address issues of um, agro-processing and post-harvesting challenges. You find that, yes, you have commercialized, the infrastructure is there, the road is there, but farmers do not know how to handle their produce from the garden up to the export. There are issues of pace, issues of poor handling. So to me, to have a complete value chain, we need to look at that. But also, you can't industrialize when the homes have no backbone in terms of, I would love to see a home with a cottage industry, that every home at their backyard, they are producing something. That every child who goes to school to learn English, mathematics, science, has a practical skill that can be reported back home, but all students in schools have no single skill. Masi has said she wants to see more exports, but somebody has to finance those exports. Uh, Patrick has said he wants cottage industries, but when I go to borrow from Kenneth, first of all, his building alone is intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, this, this, we face real financial challenges in this economy of ours. What would, you like to, what would you have liked to see from your perspective? If I'm going to help a small SME access finance, I need to first deal with the fundamentals. Are they actually in good shape to be able to produce sufficient milk for the market? What can I do as government to facilitate that production? How can I, what can I do to be able to create a market for their produce? So once those things start taking off the ground, then there will be reason for Kenneth to look at them as a viable proposition to give him money. In fact, you won't need to push Kenneth to go to this man. The moment he begins to see the cash flows going through, he'll be the first guy to knock and do. can I actually give you some money? There are areas like uh, agriculture, that are taking one billion a year, yet those are people who can earn their one billion by themselves. They have a lot of land. They should commercialize as a ministry. Yes. When you look at uh, the expenditure of 3.2 billion on education, uh, a lot of it is going to uh, uh, tertiary and those higher institutions of learning, which have capacity to earn their own income. Okay. So if we do not task the heads of government institutions and sectors to run them uh, on a business approach to generate their own revenue, then at one point we are going to choke on this debt. It's a good thing that many more people are getting uh, interested in commercial agriculture, but many of them are still doing it part time. That's not enough. We have to have people who actually go there and do it properly. There is a lot of science in agriculture. Many of us are doing it part-time. If you've tried to do it part-time, you know what I'm talking about. You, you won't do it properly. That, that's the truth. That is it we had for you today. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more news updates and other programs here on New Vision TV by visiting our website, which is newvision.co.ud forward slash video. Our social media platforms, Facebook is the New Vision, Twitter is at New Vision, where Instagram is at New Vision, where and our YouTube channel is New Vision TV. Catch up with me on my Twitter handle. I am Ruth, the voice. We end with a fact file.